These $29 motors have been designed by science to have the best performance and the most efficiency. I don't think the average pilot will notice anything special about them. Or will they? In this video, I'm going to reveal what makes them different to other motors and if the average FPV pilot can actually tell that they're better and whether they're really worth $29 each. But first, let me share with you the scientific process that Chris Rosser used to engineer these motors. Chris Rosser has tested over 50 different FPV motors and that's given him a lot of data about their performance. And what he noticed is that all of these motors, which are supposed to be the same, had surprisingly large variances in their performance on the bench. So he adapted a tool that was developed by MIT University for simulating electric car motors to FPV. But the results he got when he ran the tests were just way off. So he had to use the 50 motors to painstakingly calibrate the tool for FPV drones. But after it was calibrated, he created a digital twin and then ran the test over 20,000 times to find the most optimal design. And from this, Chris developed the AOS Supernova 2207 motor, which on the bench significantly outperformed the 50 motors he had tested in thrust, torque and efficiency. But how does the AOS Supernova motors outperform those other motors and what makes them different? Well, brushless motors like the ones in our FPV drones use two opposing magnets to make the motor spin, but the magnetic field escapes out in all directions. So to direct the magnetic force back towards the magnets, they have a shield known as a flux ring, except most motors have been using thinner flux rings and thicker magnets to create higher performance. And from Chris's 20,000 tests, he found that a thicker flux ring, as well as thinner magnets, produced better results. But that wasn't the only innovation to increase the performance. One of the two magnets in our FPV motors is an electromagnet. But for most motors, they use a solid stator, and that's what the wires are wound around. So in order to reduce weight and improve heat dissipation, Chris went with a hollow stator, Therefore, the supernovas were able to have scientifically better performance than normal FPV motors. Now, before we find out whether I can tell if they fly better than normal motors, we need to know their specifications. I know a lot of people have been asking what is the actual stator size, but my calipers aren't exactly reliable, so take these measurements as close, but not 100% accurate. And even with the battery in my digital calipers being flat, you can tell from the measurements, they look closer to be a 2308 motor than a 2207. And that's one of the ways that Chris is potentially able to get more performance out of these motors. But apart from the dimensions of the motor, there's something else that can give pilots an artificial feeling of having more power. You see, typically most five inch freestyle motors are 1750 to 1850 kV while the supernovas are 1980 kV. And what that higher kV means is more power because the motor is spinning faster for every one volt of electricity it gets. So therefore at 100% power on a 6S quad running 1800 kV motors, the propeller was spinning at 46,980 RPM, whilst the supernovas at 1980 kV are spinning at 51,678 RPM. But this doesn't make the supernova special because you can buy most motors in higher KVs. T-Motor F60s come in 1950 or 2020 KV. Now science is one thing, and sure, bench testing can prove on paper just how much better they are. But can the average pilot actually tell? Chris publishes a lot of technical analysis of different FPV products, and that comes from his extensive bench testing. And with these motors, Chris has published data which shows that, at least on the bench, the data says they're better than the average of the 50 motors he's tested. And people who wouldn't normally be able to tell the difference, they start to notice and feel that the motors may actually have more thrust and more efficiency as well as more torque. Or that you now have all this information which says other motors aren't as good, but now you think that the data transfers into the real world. Therefore, that when you're flying them, you believe they actually make you a better pilot. These are just two examples of how the human mind plays tricks on us, and they're actually known as cognitive bias. 
And there are a few different types of bias happening here in those two examples. When you notice things more because of something you have, like how you see more red cars when you own one, that's just like how the motors are going to feel more powerful because that's selection bias. When you have all this information that supports a certain decision, such as all the data saying that it stacks up to be better, well, that's information bias. But when you were told these motors were designed by science and that statement doesn't apply to most other motors, you relied too heavily on the design by science fact. And that's anchoring bias because it's anchored you to these are science and the others aren't. And while I'm here trying to work out whether they're good or not, I am skeptical of the whole hype around this art of science and just how much weight the FPV community is putting on these test results and not actually going out and flying them blind and seeing for themselves. But on the same token, I have to acknowledge that that's kind of my own cognitive biases coming in and no one is immune to this. Even with putting cognitive bias aside, at $29, they still aren't cheap. And they're some of the most expensive motors on the market. And most pilots won't be able to tell. But you still want to get the best flying quad possible. And therefore, you may think that the science and engineering of these motors makes your quad fly better. On Chris Ross's website, he makes some bold data-driven claims about the motors. 18% more thrust, 4.6% more efficiency, 33% more torque than the average 2207 motor. Now is that mathematically 50% better, or is it on average 20% better? But even if you compare them to the T-Motor Velox V3, that's half the price of the AOS Supernovas at $15, and you can choose 1950 kV variants, the average pilot will actually get similar real-world flight experience. And therefore, you're going to have more money in your pocket, 60 bucks to be exact. But even still, buying new motors to get better flight performance is not going to help if you don't have a clean build that flies great. So you need to know how to build a 5 inch freestyle quad. You can join the hangar and access my courses, get one to one help, membership rewards and even my affiliate program, you can just click the link in the description. Or you can watch this video here on how to build your own 5 inch freestyle drone. I'm Darren Allett, until next time, don't forget to send it.